What's up, everyone? Welcome to my corner of the internet. I'm your host, Ryan Kramer, and this is Crossover Commerce, presented by Ping Pong Payments, the leading global payments provider helping sellers keep more of their hard-earned money. Hey, what's up, everyone? Ryan Kramer with Crossover Commerce coming at you with another great episode on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, or Twitter. This is my corner of the internet where I bring the best and brightest in the Amazon and e-commerce space. If you're tuning in on any of the social platforms, thanks for joining in today. Uh, If this is your first time, welcome. Uh, This is a great podcast where you're going to learn about the greatest minds and experts and thought leaders in the Amazon and e-commerce space. It touches on, on anything from shipping logistics to marketing and advertising uh, your category, where you might, uh, where your category listings, where you might be uh, moving internationally, saving money, saving time, saving effort. We're all about bringing value on this podcast. That being said, every episode of Crossover Commerce is presented by Ping Pong Payments. Ping Pong Payments is a cross-border payment solution helping you save your time, money, and effort, whether it's Expanding internationally or just paying out your suppliers and manufacturers, you're going to save time, money, and effort when it comes to paying out in localized currency. It's easy to do. It's free to sign up. All you have to do is just go to usa.pingpongx.com forward slash podcast to catch all of our past episodes, but also to sign up for free today. Just make sure you mention Cross of Her Commerce sent you. That being said, this is episode two. I'm going to look back on my notes real quick. 219. If you looked at the introduction or if you saw my note on LinkedIn, we don't actually have Yoni Mazur, the CGO of Gatita, on today. That's okay. He lost his voice, so we don't want to talk to a horse a guest. But we've upgraded or we've also enhanced our relationship. I don't know what to say without offending somebody, but we've gotten another great mind here a uh, friend of the show is like i like to come back onto the podcast the ceo of gatita uh anton over at gatita he's the CG, uh, ceo and we talked about last time um when he was joining and we talked about prosper i figured i can get him on today and luckily he said yes uh, to talk a little bit about our initial topic um let me pull it up here what we titled the podcast episode epi auditing and reimbursements and of course uh, who better to do that than the CEO of Katita, Anton, uh, over at Katita. Anton, thank you so much for hopping on on a short notice on Crossover Commerce. I got you on mute. I can't unmute you, unfortunately. Happy to be back there you go. here. <laughs> Thanks, man. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, you like you said, you're the hype man. You're the guy behind the scenes. Uh, we were just talking about this on such <clears> a short notice. You decked out in the Gatita swag, which looks so nice. I like the uh, pull. It's not a pullover. It's like a not a life preserver. Was a vest. Yeah, wait, this is like our holiday vest gift thing, and maybe we'll we'll have some of prosper for you too if you're wow if you, if you come to me at the right time. Yeah, it's cool. Right I'm actually wearing it over a sweatshirt. So it's a little awkward, <laughs> but you get the branding going, so I right. guess we're good. Yeah. Well, that no, it's good. Uh, you, it's probably very cold where you guys are at in New York. So I'm yeah, it is it's, pretty cold. It's freezing. Yeah, it's cold here too. Um, but hey, thanks for hopping on today. I know initially we we're having on Yoni, uh, but you you're you're the guy also that can talk on anything with auditing and reimbursements. If it's okay with you, do you mind just sharing like a quick brief background of who you are and why uh, what you do there at Gatita? Absolutely. So I am the CEO, as as Ryan said. Um, what do I do? A little of everything, trying to grow the company. I'm overseeing sales and marketing. I work on the tech side too, business development, maybe some investment areas, kind of a little of everything trying to grow. Uh, I've been here for a little over a year officially and it's been an interesting, fun, wild ride in a good way. Um, so that's a little a nutshell about what I do every day. I didn't think the CEO was supposed to do like product development. Well, I guess like a, you guys a scale. You guys are pretty big at this juncture. How big is um, Gatita at this point? Yeah, we have about 104 people. Holy smokes. Um, yeah, a bunch in the, in the U.S., some overseas. Um, I kind of want to like go deep and understand all the different processes. So I spent a lot of time in sales, marketing, whatever. Now I'm trying to, I guess, move back a little. I'm not like a CEO, uh, uh, MBA train. They just, you know, I ran an Amazon business. I helped find the Prosper show as we spoke about last time. So I, I know a thing or two, but software and service business is different. So I'm just learning and humbly trying to hire people who know more than me in different areas and scale that. But to do that, I need to understand the details. So I'm trying to bounce in between both. Now we got to a good point where I'm kind of able to step back and do higher level biz dev, which is what I want to do. But there's always, you know, different things that come up. Right. So 
that's kind of a, an overview. Well, how since the last time we talked, uh, that was, gosh, summer of 2021, which seems like a while ago. And again, you've already been there a year, which is fantastic to, to see how fast pe things move. Yeah. What's been new since uh, since we talked with you last? Obviously, you went to Q3, Q4. Is that big time of year for Gatito, or is that is, is it more like Q1? That That's really the time when lots of sales happen in Q4. You guys kind of audit everything and, yeah. and really do your magic there. Yeah, so our team grew a lot, maybe almost double. Um, <clears throat> but to your point, there is some seasonality to claims or volume because like if there's lots of Amazon sales in Q4, then you're auditing it in Q1 or Q2, you know, somewhat seasonal. Um, a, lot of, a lot of sellers are busy on their business in Q4, so they maybe don't want to sign up with us or don't have the time, even though it's kind of easy. It takes a few minutes and they maybe think it's harder than it is. So not that much seasonality per se, but lots of, I guess, development since Prosper. We spoke before Prosper, right? Yeah, we we spoke. Um, gosh, right before it, that would have been June, mid June. Yeah, so right since before then, it, yeah. I mean, since then, obviously, we brought in a lot more clients, a lot more team, marketing, sales, development. Uh, we're working on some other type of software tools that are related to what we do. Um, been to a lot of shows and events, physical, <laughs> virtual, different, different, different travel rides between different pandemic waves, and we're we're just ready to launch a crazy travel schedule for march which is exciting i know uh, which is like i don't know five six eight events um, i was gonna say so, friend, yeah so was that's like, cool you guys sponsor and this is not a joke this is i, I would think honestly too, you guys sponsor so many different things but it brings a lot of value i'm assuming for for the people who are there um and whether it be in-person shows or i was yeah. joking with uh your cmo rob stanley i was just like he came back from a seller cruise that just got finished. Now he's off today to Austin mm -hmm. for a million dollar seller event. There's so many great, there's so many events going on. So how do yeah. you guys pick and choose which ones to go to? Yeah, that's a good question. So as we spoke, and whether the audience knows or not, like what we do, which we could talk about is strategic and helpful and value. So it's not that hard to sell someone free money, but it's not so easy to obtain <laughs> and do. So whatever we sponsor at an event at, whether it costs X or Y, as long as we could see return on investment by signing up one, two, three, ten sellers, whatever size, it does make sense because the model, you know, calls covers that, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to other businesses where let's say it's a fixed mo a fixed amount or a long term contract, you can't really quantify so much the ROI on ad spend or marketing spend. So like we and we're getting better at that. So makes sense to sponsor every event or any event. Uh, no, we don't have right. uh, any, you know, seed or or even like Series A investment. You know, I invest have been to the company, but really it's kind of organic growth and and re real reassignment of funds. So right. we try to sponsor whatever we can if we see an ROI. That's like a very rough answer. No, that but, yeah, it makes makes sense. I think like because you, how your services and and products are set up, there there's just there's no downside. And that's why it's it's so obviously ROI. That's that's a common marketing right. or, or business answer. You know, how do you quantify it? Sometimes you lose a little until you gain. So as you see, we're just trying to brand it all over uh, for better or worse. So people see that we're legitimate and that we're there because we want to educate it. So as much as as much as we're auditing, which is a lot in aggregate, like mm -hmm. maybe it's, a, you know, five, 10 percent of the entire Amazon market. So really. So how yeah. do you reach how do you reach the 90 plus percent, uh, whether they're in China or Europe? Or some guy in, in Nebraska that doesn't know about Prosper sure. or about you. Uh, we spoke about this last time. So, right. had, so my mission is, or our mission is, to educate the world and sellers, whether they're the Nikes or Joe's shoes, that they should use our service because we can help both right. uh, in the same way. And that's pretty cool. It's a bit of a tall task, but if I could just educate everyone about it, again, most sellers don't know this is a thing. Let alone, there's a company that does it that you could even tell Amazon that they're wrong. So it's just education. We, we've done a good job at like saturating this Amazon world as you, as you know, as, that you're in. And that's great. And we'll continue to, cause there's mm -hmm. always more people, but there's so many more people that don't know you or I exist that, right. need, that need help. So how do you reach them? We could have a whole podcast about that. And that's what <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. So let's go to other types of shows, other markets. Well, yeah. Fortune, Fortune 500 companies, other countries. That's an interesting point too, because obviously we're so close. Like it, it seems like you're everywhere, but that's because we we all work in the services world, and I and I think that's that's a good thing. 
but it's fascinating to hear that you say maybe only 10 to 20 percent market saturate saturation that you're you're servicing which makes me think katita is good for not just third-party sellers but you brought up a good point you guys work with one piece sellers correct is that is that is that true or is that a different animal to tackle um that's not true because we don't okay. offer that service just wanted to make yeah. be clear on that yeah yeah we have partners that do it it's a good question um i wasn't referring to like big 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 sellers like one P. So as you know, one P or for people, Amazon retail, where you sell products to Amazon and they fulfill, Yep. you know, it used to be 80, 90% of the market. Now it's less than 30. Yeah, it's, it's not a lot. Yeah. Or maybe, and it's usually the apples and Nikes of the world um, for various reasons or, or food companies that have heavy shipping. There's certain reasons why it makes sense. The problem with one P is that the, to audit it, since there's no API that's dynamic, Mm -hmm. It's not scalable. So um, so the way Gatita works is we have an Amazon authorized app store approved API mm -hmm. and we were audited by Deloitte and we understand that we have a lot of data that it's really imported and holy and we take it seriously for a vendor, for whatever reason, they don't have such a robust API. So I would literally have to log into hundreds, thousands, 10,000 accounts to download reports, which is doable, but not nearly as scalable as how we do it. We do it with data API and software. And then we have a service team filing cases that are ex Amazon that know the game again, doable for a vendor, but it's a smaller diminishing market with much more labor where it's like, what's the point of focusing on that? Now, mm -hmm. do I want to offer it to people who ask? Cause I have a lot of clients who ask sure. And maybe we will partner or figure it out. Cause it's definitely something I think about a lot, but I don't see why it makes so much sense to, you know, double down on versus other opportunities that we're encountering. Absolutely. Well, you had some people that were, Carlos Alvarez, a uh, fr uh, friend, I'm assuming, of you guys in Katita. <laughs> He's like, I was looking for something to watch before my parent, our son's parent-teacher meeting. Carlos, thank you for tuning in. Uh, and then obviously Rob Crush on Online Seller Cruise, which is a fantastic event. I heard it went off without a hitch, and I think it's such a cool event. Like you said, um, kind of going into that uh, with with um, with that, Anton, um, I think that there's so many different things that you said market saturation of how do you how do you focus on that 80 to 90 percent that you guys don't service so what, what's that philosophy of is that at events like how what's that reach out look like of um, a service like you guys since you're a marketing guy i love your ideas but um <laughs> i'm thinking lot. about going to you know any trade show any trade show like uh the dog show the gun show the food show whether you walk the floor and you approach mm -hmm. people because they're probably selling on Amazon, maybe they, they, they don't really want to be pitched, but that's another story. Or you exhibit at a wholesale show and probably half the rooms could be your client. That's like virgin territory, right? For Amazon right. service. I see some, some types of like, you know, helium tens or others like, you know, exhibiting there because they have that approach. Well, it's a beginner market. Yeah. You don't know who's ever going to come. A beginner market, but like, I don't know, let's say I went with you, let's say you and I ping pong and Gatita went to the, uh the furniture no that's that's a tough category we went to the to ces okay everyone knows mm -hmm. ces big electronics show i've been i used to go there for I don't know, 10 15 years sure and we opened the booth It'd be a little weird and different but it's refreshing because people kind of see how many how many how many like tvs can you see all of a sudden you have a really good slogan about payments or international commerce or ping pong or reimbursements mm -hmm. and free money for Gatita. And people ask questions, I guarantee you it would show an ROI on our spend on the show. Now that's just having a booth. Um, what if we walked around to each vendor strategically and didn't really sell them because you know both of our services are actually beneficial, right? You're helping them save money. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not like selling a service or a contract is hard and no one really wants to be sold. But if you could strategically say, like, hey, I'm just helping you save money and streamline, that's often easier, as you know, and I'm sure there's you know, there's nuances to that. Right. So that's something I, I think about and we're starting to do it. Like, let's just go to any show, any country and see the ROI. That's a big idea slash task, but you know, got to start somewhere. Right. That's one, that's one idea I have as far as market. Again, there's also people that never go to shows. How do you reach these sellers in the middle of nowhere? Right. Um, online targeting mailers, uh, or what if we went to different countries? Europe has over whatever million plus sellers very different demographic and style of seller there and they don't know we exist because i speak to these people when i when we close them and they're like what and i have to reassure them or you know translate like it's open open market um so you know it takes time and travel and effort but the good news is that in the u.s there's plenty of you know growth 
Right. So it's almost like, where do you start? But yeah, I like to have an initiative. Uh, we're building initiatives and hiring and scaling to reach many other channels, I should say. Well, you, you brought up such a good point that not everyone goes to a trade show, like not everyone goes to these events. My first one will be in person will be actually prosper here in less than a month. So just because of like opportunity or for a reason, right? Like in the last two years, people may not have gone to events or three years or they just gone to Amazon or whatever that looks like. You said people are coming and going into the market. They just may not hit you at that one time where you're at an event, but then the next time that next year, they might catch up with you guys and say, oh my gosh, that would have saved me tens of thousands of dollars yeah, on I mean auditing. How does how does your company do that? How do you reach yeah. non-engaged sellers? Is that something that you think about? Uh, yeah, I'm curious what you think about it. Yeah, that that's the thing for so for financial services, which we both uh, are in different capacities. You have to look at the the fintech side or the financial side of how how do you how do you service businesses that are not just in e-commerce world, but that you know maybe in a B2B world of uh, currency, but paying out their employees in different currencies, right? You start to think of mindsets of uh, maybe I'm paying out my supplier and manufacturer. That, that's a whole different, um, you know, company. It, it doesn't have to be on e- uh, e-commerce. It can be just in general. Um, if uh, Home Depot plays out, you know, suppliers and manufacturers all over the world. So where does that business get done? It get, happens at CES. It happens at FinTech. Or, uh, but the, financial but the service. majority of ping pong is e-commerce. I yes, 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So, right. so, so the, but you guys are actually a little more broad. I mean, we're working on it, but it could be Shopify. It could, it could be anything. Yeah. It's just money exchange. That's even more. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot than, more than <laughs> auditing Amazon FBA. And again, we're working on other services. So exactly. this actually, this this problem for you is even a bigger one. It's like everyone's game. Anyone right. selling online, uh, buying from China or Asia or Mexico, like that. that's the new world, especially with it's COVID. A, so I'm sure you're seeing that. Yeah. Um, and, and showing that value to people, obviously, of why does that matter? Because I do it this way versus not like like you have to probably tell teach people it does matter because you, you just basically do math for people of hey what, what's the percentage that you're on average saving people at scale i just uh like that, i just know? i just sent a wire transfer to a foreign country for an investment that i made and it took me like two days to do it yep like trying to figure it's it a out. joke like i have a rep at the bank and like at the go and show my this and my my like i feel like give them like my blood and then it got flagged and i'm like what yeah and that's not normal in this world but it's such an old school wire technology that you know with ping pong type tools or other banks i've used like yeah maybe it's not an investment but still like why should that be hard yeah i mean mean, people use crypto in like four seconds they send like four billion dollars to 27 countries and i have to go to the bank and sign pages come back you like have to do it in person. Yeah. That's so if you educate stuff. people that like there is another way, they don't even know to know. But once you tell them it's like game changer, like you have them. Absolutely. Uh, it's a hard task because it's moving fast, but you know, it's definitely going there. And I think the banks just don't can pivot fast enough because they're so old school. Yeah. The the ecosystems and structures of which, you know, the opening of a bank account in person is, is it's not an, it's not oh, the opening anymore. opening yeah. the account took me another two days yep and and i have other accounts with them and then funding it and then wiring it, it's like it's just not worth the time just a pain exactly yeah well all, all of that being said so w- what is what's kind of the mission or i guess as you're educating people as you're uh, gaining market share in that regards what's the number one thing that people just are confused are at or they just didn't realize that this was an option that you had control over. And I say control over because everyone can sift through all the notions that the comings and goings and transactions on Amazon, you guys do such a good job of with tools and services and technology to be able to scan and, and flag discrepancies. People don't have that time in order to do that. So what's been the biggest like eye opener for people? Is it is it on just like lost inventory? Is it on um, you're owed one thing and you didn't get paid that, that full out? What, what's that biggest earning learning? a good question i want to try to give you some examples to make it a little more vivid yeah. but um i had a client that was a really large supplement type company um for a specific disorder or medical condition not like fda approved like one of these supplements things but supposedly really works very popular like nine figures plus revenue shopify True. just getting into amazon crazy growth and a little more corporate in that because they're just really big but they're still like a startup in nature at heart so they're just shipping left and right and like 
crazy growth. They don't know what's going on. So someone reached out to me on LinkedIn. They like paid to message me because they weren't my, my message yet. <laughs> I never had that. It's like, hi, can you, I, you know, can you please help me? It's like me? a collect call. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, wow, like you paid to reach me. I'm, I'm so special. I feel so special. And she was cr- sweet, sweet. I actually knew who she was from a different company or, or, or one of her friends. And she's like, Eitan, like I'm the Amazon person here. Like we're growing like gangbusters. Like I can't reconcile a rapport. Like we're getting all these investors coming in. We don't know what the hell's going on. Can you help me? I'm like, what do you need? She's like, you know, we need to understand inbound discrepancies. We ship all stuff to Amazon. They do, they don't have it. It doesn't add up to our net suite or our system. And we need to know dimensions and, and like all this stuff. And I was like, it's your lucky day. She's like, what do you mean? And I was like, I have all this for you. I will do it for you. I will not charge you a penny. If we're successful, we'll charge a percent, which is our model. Yep. And not to take credit because I didn't build this company or, <laughs> but like it took a little time, but we got these, we got them over a mil, almost a million dollars back in almost three months. Wow. Granted, they had some messy processes that most don't. Yeah. I mean, but not only did we do that, and she was like super thrilled, but she was able to get reports and data to her compliance team and her investors that reconciled everything. So, like, she was like, super stressed that like she would never figure this out. And I was like, you know, you came to the right place. So we could work with strategic accounts, eight, nine, 10 figures, because it's the same data, whether you're selling 10 units or 10 million, right. we're able to scale that. And that was a very good feeling. So I said to her, I was like, you know, you should ask for a raise because that's a lot it's of money like for the company. Dollars, and, yeah. and she joked, I'm like, no, you really should. So whether you're contributing X to the bottom line that they never would have got it. And like, you know, uh, you, you, sh- you should benefit from it. I don't know whether she did or not, but, I, I bring that story. It's like just like one of those things where like they had no idea that they could have. They probably wrote her off anyways. They're making money hand over fist. But with a small integration, we were able to do a lot of. We were able to be. We were able to do this very successfully. Now I'm sure that there are many companies of that nature, that problem. So that's just one example I like to give, or that's very fresh for me because I just yeah you just I saw this report that. and it was like amazing, uh, and she's like on cloud nine. So you know companies with even more complex issues or aggregators with complicated systems. We just built, you know, you asked me about Katita on the sales side, but on the dev side, a whole portal for document flow. So if you ship to Amazon and there's a shortage, usually they'll ask for proof of purchase and proof of delivery documents, data. So Mm -hmm. we, we built out lots of tools where we can enable you to make those documents or sign those documents, or we can integrate with your LTL carriers or UPS to get them. So, like 60, 70% of the auditing we could do without your help. You just set it up and forget it kind of. But the 30, 40, we need you. So some people just don't want to do it or they're lazy or both. But if I could integrate it at step one and be ahead of it, then even before I need it, I'll have it. And that's what we're starting to do and reach out to clients. So we're talking about clients we don't have, but even the clients we do have, we could probably double our output by communication, portal, customer success, and we're hiring for that and we're building that out. It's very next level. It's very cool. So, so cool. she was one of the first to benefit from that, but it worked like amazingly. So I'm, I'm proud of that. Do you guys have, do you guys ever fear that you have, you leave money on the table for clients? Is that, is that a constant fear that you and the team are kind of looking at of, oh man, we might've been able to get a thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah. I think it's our fiduciary and ethical responsibility to do the best we can. So if I email you or I message you or I call you nine times and you don't give me the data, that's like only so much I can do. But as long as I know I did and I gave you the the effort to, or the opportunity I do what I can for you. And then I, for what I can't do without your help, I reach out to that. That's all I can do. So now we have a portal where you can drag and upload and integrate. So it's easier. So you've all, all the more reason why there's no excuses to not comply, but I feel yeah. bad when they don't. And I could actually show people like, Hey Ryan, like since we last audited your account, you know, or even send the message, like there's 12 grand up for grabs. It's going to expire in a week. You'd be surprised that a lot of people don't even reply <laughs> to that. I don't know yeah. why, because it's super low hanging. I wouldn't send it if it wasn't. But another thing I learned is there's a lot of, this is a bit, um, not awkward. This is a bit um, political, but a lot of companies, people feel like if they disclose this, that they did something wrong, right? So if you show your boss that Katita got you back 200 grand, you'll be like, he'll be like, what the hell's wrong with you? Right. It's not the case. We're just you able think- to do it at scale because we have data and visibility that no one has. Um, so sometimes people like think it makes them look bad and it's like really awkward. So I've encountered that also. It's like, who's the decision maker, internal, especially with these bigger companies, like internal company drama and accountability. 
So, you know, that, that's okay. I've dealt with that before in other businesses, but I, I try to poignantly explain to them why that's really not what's happening here. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that's a shame, but that does happen for sure. Oh my gosh. I, I, I mean, that is stressful. And obviously it's not everyone's, it, is it a lot of, and I would say if you had to break it down, is it more in user input or is it more Amazon side that you guys have to deal with in that regards of, I, I know it depends, but on a consistent basis, is it more user um, air where that you have to, you guys are recouping for them? Like you said, it's not that person's fault or is could it be their fault? Does that make sense? I'm I'm trying to get to the bottom. Yeah, of yeah. It. No, a lot of times it's Amazon error. There's always like a certain margin of error, the one percent, two percent, whatever it may be. Sure. But within our client base, some cloud, some people like this customers, they just ship very sloppily, or not best practice, or they have fragile items, or different countries have more loss. So it's really variable, but it's both. Uh, it's usually not. There's the Amazon error. There's the client causing the Amazon error, but there's always like a a reckoning, right? That's what we try to kind of plow through and elucidate great and because like you said it, it's that three month window that's a sweet spot where you guys are working with correct with uh reimbursements and... so so you can go back 18 months for many reimbursements some are nine six months some are three months okay but again if you if you haven't done it well or even if you have we can go back 18 months and and show what we can do so if you're doing it in-house or you think you're doing a good job or you're not sure don't worry i won't tell your boss i could do an audit say hey ryan like i could also get you this amount it's not going to conflict. It's just going to be additive. And you'll right. only, let's say, pay a success fee. No agreements, no commitments. Like, why would you not do that? Right. Usually people may not sign up or even leave, which is rare because they just don't get that. But really, there's no reason not to do it. It could be additive. It could be complementary. It could be a cleanup. It could be customizable. Let's say you just want to do inbound claims. You don't want to touch that. Like, that's fine. We're very flexible. So that's something I try to also educate people about. Interesting. So with going into 2022, obviously, uh, we, we talked about seasonality, but kind of engaging with those customers, what is what is your hope to happen like this year? Like, what's the goal and expectations for you as as kind of the leader and the the the, the tech guy, the, the support guy, if you will, or anything like that? I know you have to go soon. So what, yeah, what's kind of that um, mission for you? Uh, kind of what I said, I want to just increase the market share, number one, uh, educate. Um, elucidate and I want to work on other tools like this inbound tool and service that we have and this pick and pack tool and other like kind of SaaS related stuff that we are working to build for our many clients and that's complementary not, not like you know out of our lane no advertising none of that but like focus on financial technology uh, visibility profitability uh, cost recovery shipping we have some things up our sleeve that maybe we'll show some at Prosper. Maybe we'll show some there you go. Uh, Q3, but a lot of development and and expenditure towards those uh, efforts. Well, I appreciate that. Well, thanks so much for hopping on today. I know you're busy, guys. So thanks for spending just half an no. hour or so with no, us. That's fine. Uh, Thank we'll, you for having me. We'll see you in person here and Prosper here shortly. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, but thanks so much, Aton. Of thank you. Atita. Yep, absolutely. And then thank you, everyone else, for hopping on another episode of Crossover Commerce. This is episode 219 of My Corner of the Internet called Crossover Commerce, where I bring the best and brightest in the Amazon e commerce space. Thanks to the team of Rick Atita for hopping on and making uh, this just another great episode. We love having them. If you have more information, just go to gatita.com. Uh, check it out. It's free to sign up. Uh, partners of Ping Pong, partners of lots of different people, but check them out. Again, not a lot of people are taking advantage. Uh, of the service that they have to offer. So that being said, I'm Ryan Kramer. This is Crossover Commerce. We'll catch you guys next time on another episode. Take care.